excuse me one moment. <coughs> Alright, I'm Dr. Budgie, and in this video, I'll be using Python to make the game Lunar Lander. I can't think of a reason why I'm doing this, I just am. So there. Also, I'm a physicist, and as a physicist, I only know the matplotlib, numpy, and scipy modules. So it's pretty safe to say that this game isn't going to be amazing, more just a thing that exists. Something? Oh, the idiot. Boop. Hello, my name is Dr. Budgie, and I am a dullard. When Atari made this game, they used vector graphics. I knew this because I looked it up. But for some reason, I continued to do this monstrosity. This ain't vector graphics. This is raster graphics. Let's do it again, but this time with vectors. You know, how it's supposed to be. Now that we've got our lander as a happy little vector, all we need to do is make it move around the screen and spin. Moving a vector, or if you want to get all la -di da about it, translating a vector, is actually really simple. You just add or take away the amount you want it to move. So, for example, I've got the lander here with the octagon centered at 0, 0. If I want the octagon now to be at 2020, I just add 20 to the x coordinates and add 20 to the y coordinates. And ta da, it's moved. Now we've done that, we've just got to get it to go roundy round. So to get our lander to spin, we're going to need to use a bit more maths than just adding and taking away. We're going to have to use trigonometry. But it's not as bad as it sounds. Let's start with the simplest example, a point on the x-axis. Now let's rotate our axes around the origin by theta degrees, which gives us this, where x dash and y dash are the rotated coordinates. 
and from the geometry of the problem we can see that x dash equals x cos theta and y dash equals x sine theta. That's all well and good, but what about when y doesn't equal zero? Like in this example here, with a point located at x, y. God, this is well boring. But I spent ages making all these diagrams, so I'm using them. So, like my mum said as I was hatching, let's just smash this thing out quick. Blah, 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 some maths, here's the result. Now let's apply this to the lander. As you can see, we've got the same example as before, where the octagon of the lander is centered at zero, zero. Now, let's rotate it by 30 degrees. There we go, it's nice and rotated now. It's important to remember that these equations will rotate the vector around the origin. So for our lander, that means we have to do any spinnies before any uppy downs or lefty rights. So far, our land has been a bit static, ain't it? And obviously, the Atari version, well, it moves around the screen, doesn't it? So I suppose we'd better get ours to move and all. Guess who didn't press record on this bit? But luckily you didn't miss much. Just me screaming myself unconscious. So basically, I got bored and I started cutting corners. If we look at a screenshot of the gameplay and then zoom in on the terrain, we can see where all the lines intersect, there are these bright points. So all I did was just use a threshold to pick out all these points. And at first appearance, it seems to work. But then, well, you zoom in, and it's a bit of a dog's dinner. So I could fix this with some clever programming. The only problem is, I ain't that clever. So I'm just going to use brute force.
God, this video is getting well long. I reckon we'll make this a two-parter. Next time, I'll add some physics. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. And you can probably do it better than I can do it. So don't just sit there like a pile of sick on the pavement, waiting for the council to hose you away. Why not give it a go yourself? This is the part where the video ends, and you go away.